So I've been powering a small portion of my house for the last two months using these two EcoFlow Delta Pros. And I have only been charging them on solar. I've got two arrays here. I've got 1120 watts going to each one of the Delta Pros. I've only plugged them in just a couple times to actually charge them from a wall outlet. So today I just thought I'd go over my experience with what the, the positive and the negative things are about the EcoFlow Delta Pros and using them in the 240 volt mode when they're tied together. And the main reason I want to cover that is because we're going to be taking this all down. We're going to be redoing our solar setup. Because yesterday I just installed 16 solar panels on the pole barn roof, just over 7K worth of solar. And we're installing a permanent solar power system in the pole barn that's going to power both the pole barn and the house. So the Delta Pros probably are, this is the last day that they will be used continuously. So just a quick overview of my setup. I've got these two Delta Pros. They are tied together with the double voltage hub here. And I've got 240 volts going into this generator inlet right here. Now I'm not powering my entire house. I'm just powering this small panel over here. It's got eight circuits on it. And basically I've got four circuits on this Delta Pro and I've got four circuits on this one. So this one is powering a fridge. This one is powering a freezer and some lights. This one has the microwave and the propane hot water here. Um, so they, they've got circuits divided up between them. I don't have any 240 volt loads. Now the reason for that is 240 volt loads are power hogs and they will drain your batteries very quickly. So if you, you wanna try to do a setup like this, you really don't wanna try to power 240 volt loads. Now the benefit of having the double voltage hub is is I've got twice the power, you know? So now instead of having 3.6 kilowatts of power, I've got 7.2. So I do have twice the power. I can run more things at once. So I do have my loads fairly well balanced. We're using about two kilowatt hours a day on each one of these, but I would drain all the way down to about 30% the next day. And a lot of that has to do with their self-consumption. These do take these do take energy just to run overnight. Even if you're not using anything, just these sitting idle overnight and on, you're gonna lose probably eight, maybe 10% of the charge just overnight, not even using anything. So you're, you are gonna use a certain percentage of your battery just to keep these powered up. And the only times I ever had these completely discharged was on days that it was, it was rainy all day long. So it's completely overcast, very overcast all day and raining. They would not get enough solar to charge back up. And if you didn't get them charged back up enough, of course, they're not gonna make it through the nighttime. And um, I've had that happen uh, a few times because it has been very rainy here. Now, if it was rainy at the beginning of the day and then it, and it stopped raining, a lot of times it would get sunny enough in the afternoon or at least not so cloudy that they would charge back up. And uh, I would find that it, it basically needed to be an entire day of rain to, to really discharge these, at least the amount of power that I'm using. So these Delta Pros say you can hook 1600 watts of solar up to them. I find that that is very difficult if you're trying to buy residential style panels um, and trying to outsource your own panels. It's hard to, to match up the voltage and amps to, to, to be able to actually charge those at 1600 watts. I, I think that 1200 watts is gonna be a little bit more feasible on uh, if you're going out and buying your own solar panels off of like Amazon. So I had just moved these on the table and they're, they're actually not powering uh, the portion of our house right now. So I'll go ahead and turn on the double voltage hub. They're hooked to the lights behind the camera. We'll see if this affects them. All right, the double voltage hub is now on, but now the outlets in the front are off. Um, they say they're on, but my lights are off. So that is one of the downsides. Um, I don't understand why that is, uh, why they stopped working, but um, they did. So you can't plug in to the front of the unit while the double voltage hub is on. So you gotta understand if you're using this, um, this is where you plug into, you can't, you can't plug into the outlets on the front. So that is kind of an oddball thing uh, that you might wanna be aware of. Flip it over to the house. You see the basement lights blinked because they are powered by this when, when it's hooked up. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the double voltage hub back off so that I can have my lights uh, for the camera. Oh, flip this back. Now I've gotta turn each one of these on. There's a light and there's a light. Okay, so the double voltage hub has a couple little bit of quirks and that's one of them. So when it's energized, the plugs on the front don't work. The other thing is, is when it is energized, you cannot charge these from an outlet. And that includes a generator. So if you're powering your house with this and the batteries are drained, you just can't plug these into a generator and charge them back up with the 240 volt mode working. You're gonna have to actually have to turn off the 240 volt to your house and then you could charge them up from a generator just fine. And that's only in the 240 volt mode. If you use these individually, you could charge them with a generator while you're still putting power out the front of the outlets. So um, I do think that uh, the 240 volt mode has a couple bit of a downside, especially, I mean, if you want to charge them or if you're wanting to use this and the outlets on the front. So uh, just be aware if you're buying these, and you're thinking about doing the 240 volt mode, there is a couple little bit of quirks. So the other big downside of the 240 volt mode is you want, to, you want to drain these equally. So if one of them drains first, the first one that drains, uh, as soon as it hits 0%, it shuts off the 240 volt mode. It just turns off both of them. And when these drain and turn off, you have to come back and manually turn them on. They're not going to turn on uh, the voltage automatically. Now, let's talk about some of the good things. So one of the good things is, is the solar, is it does charge good on solar. And even if these do power down completely, as soon as the sun comes out, they will turn back on and start to charge. So they will start to charge automatically with the sun and with solar. Uh, they just don't turn themselves back on. Obviously, it kicked up <laughs> for a second. I don't, um, Probably because the sun came out a little bit more. We're almost up to 900 watts charging right now. And you can tell the fan kicked on right then. So I do think the EcoFlows are a high quality unit. I think they, they feel very rugged. I think they're very well built. Um, the cords that they send with it, all of these cords are very, I don't know, they're very stiff, very heavy duty feeling cords. So I do think these are these are good quality project products, but um, you know, by itself, individually, one of these is almost flawless. It, it will charge up on solar. You can charge it from a generator and output at the same time. Uh, the only real quirks that I've found is just when you try to combine them together to make 240 volts. There is a few little issues there, but I have been using it for the last two months and using it continuously. And most of the time, as long as there's sun, I don't have any problems. So when these did drain the batteries, all I did is I came in here and I flipped this back to grid and powered this panel from the grid. And the next day the sun came out, it would charge them back up. When these were charged back up, I go ahead and flip this panel back over to the Delta Pros and then it would run again continuously until finally it was too cloudy, um, you know, too rainy and they finally drained and then I'd flip them back. So I, I did have several times where I went, you know, about a week running these, you know, four to seven days, running these at a time before it finally got too cloudy where they didn't charge enough. So my final thoughts on the Delta Pros, um, I think the only time you would, ever would need two of them is if you really need the 7,200 watts of power or if you have a 240 volt load that you really wanna power but more than likely that'll drain your battery very quickly. So if you don't need that 7,000 watts of power, I think your best bet is to just buy a single unit. And uh, then you could, you could buy an extra battery, have the same amount of storage, um, and you would actually be cheaper than buying, buying two of the units. Well, I think that wraps up my testing of the Delta Pros. I think we gave it a fairly good test, two months of testing, running it pretty well continuously, and then basically, you know, February and March, which are not the sunniest months of the year. And, um, you know, in the end, I mean, I think that the Delta Pro is a good solid system, especially by itself. It's just a little quirky um, when you try to use both together in 240 volt mode. So uh, the improvements that, that EcoFlow could make is one, be able to make it so you can charge it with a generator and output power at the same time. That would be a huge improvement. Um, 
because you know if you don't have solar the only way to charge it is going to be a gas generator or propane generator or something and then the other improvement would be once it drains completely it will auto charge on it will it will charge back up on solar but it won't turn itself back on it needs like an auto start feature so if it would turn off during the day i would lose power to my freezers and fridge until i got home and hit the button to start it back up so there's a couple little improvements that they can make to it to definitely improve the uh, the 240 volt mode and um, i think a little bit more solar would be beneficial too because 1120 watts of solar on a cloudy day may only be well on a very cloudy day it may be zero uh, especially if it's like dark and rainy but on a on a fairly overcast day you that may only be like two three hundred watts of power so the the more you can hook to it uh, especially if you're in like uh, a long-term situation uh, the more solar you can hook to it the better so there's a couple improvements that they can make to it but overall individually the single unit is a, is a good unit by itself and um, I think uh, I think that's it for our testing so now we're going to tear these solar panels out of here and um, these may end up the big panels here may end up going on our pole barn roof to add more solar over there on our permanent system but uh, now it's time to mix up the mechanical room. We're gonna change some stuff up down in our basement a little bit to line up better with the permanent system we're gonna put in. But uh, now the, the eco flows are gonna be used in the portable mode. So uh, we've got 40, almost, we've got 41 acres here. And of course we've got barns and everything that aren't backed up in any way. There's several places without power around here. So uh, the eco flows are gonna be used in more of a portable way to, to just take power anywhere on our property and use it. And they do power tools and saws and all that stuff just perfectly fine. So we're just gonna use them in a, in a portable fashion now instead of the permanent hooked up in the basement. But uh, I think that's it, you know, for the review of the system. I really wanted to give like an overall thing of all the things we experienced because I think people are looking at, you know, spending money and investing in one of these. They really need to know what they're getting into and just kind of know what a lot of little weird quirks are that you don't hear about uh, anywhere else. I think a lot of the stuff you don't really, you don't really see that in the initial reviews of these products because you don't, you haven't ran it long enough to see the problems. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if you're looking at buying one of these, you know exactly what you're getting into and, and what to expect. But uh, I think that's it for this video guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.